In this video I'm going to show you how to fully install Hornby Railmaster and use a Hornby e-link uh, which is a, a slightly difficult piece of hardware to install especially on more modern machines that don't recognize serial devices. So first of all we need to install the Hornby Railmaster software. Now, I've installed, I've downloaded it from the internet to be able to be installed directly on this machine um, as I don't have an actual DVD drive on this laptop so uh, it's in my downloads folder. You can either do it from, from the disk or from, from the internet. It won't matter which way around you, you do it. The messages that, that you'll receive will, will all be the same. So first off, we have user access control. Now we're seeing this because Hornby aren't a publisher, so the publisher is unknown. We know we know what we're about to do, so we know that we're expecting to run the RM setup. So to accept this here is is fine. And our English language is okay. And the Real Master software is very easy itself to install. The only thing you have to do is accept the license and everything else is just a case of clicking next right the way through the setup. The setup's quite quick and through this video I'm not going to speed anything up. Everything is going to happen at the speed um, that it actually happens while I'm doing this. So there we're installing all the locos at the moment with all the R numbers. In a later video I'm going to actually set up some locos um, using my own pictures rather than the, the stock ones that, that come with Real Master. So as you can see, it's going through this quite quickly. And there we have it, Real Master is now installed. And we should see all the icons now appearing on the desktop. And we can click finish. So first of all, I have not got anything plugged into this laptop at the moment. Um, the best thing to do is install Real Master and then load it for the first time. Again, we're asked to accept. We'll get asked this every time we open up Real Master. So when Real Master loads, as you can see, it's asking us our language again, which controller we've got. As you can see, we can select the E-Link, the Elite, or the Select. Um, I'm going to install the E-Link and leave everything else as standard. Um, I'm not going to set any train set because we're just using our layout rather than a, a set. And then the first time that this loads, we're going to get lots of messages popping up. So there we go. We can't find our DCC controller to, to send a handshake to. That is fine this time around because we haven't set anything. We've not got it plugged in. So we can accept that and then it's given us the message saying that we're on the evaluation and we've also got a Windows message popping up. Now this Windows message I would recommend that you allow both public and private networks. This allows the app to communicate with Real Master. So if you do buy the additional app um, to control you need to have both public and private accept, accepted through your firewall. And when you are using the app, you do have to have your PC turned on with the 
E-Link or the Select or the Elite plugged in. So we're going to allow access to that. And now we can deal with the messages that are, are left in Real Master. So we've got our evaluation message popping up because it's a first install. And would you like to learn some new things about Real Master? I'm going to select no, but if you want to read what what pops up here, hit the check button. So I'll click the cross just now. So there we go, that's Real Master now installed and it knows that this is the first time that we've installed it and it's asking us if we've got the Western Express we don't or I don't so I'm gonna hit no here if you do then hit yes it just adds a local straight in um, but in the next video I'm going to show you how to add a local in so I'm gonna hit the cross just now again remembering we don't have any controller set up we've got nothing plugged in so the next thing that we need to do is actually get that controller plugged in. So I'll hit the cog icon and that will bring up our system settings. And as you can see, our Hornby E-Link is in red here. Now that's what we expect it to be. And I've, for a very specific reason, I've not plugged anything in yet. So I'll just prepare my controller I'm just plugging it into the mains and I will then plug that into the e-link and I'll also get my USB cable ready and plug my USB cable into the computer and when this gets plugged in we should see that the computer recognizes that the e-link has been plugged in and a new device is being set up. This is what we would expect. And we know that the new device should take a minute or two to install. And we do have an unknown device here, which is now our USB serial port. This is what we actually use. And it's very important to know what COM port has been installed on. So, I will close this just now and I'll show you how to actually check that. Now, to easily find out what COM port it's on, we want to click on your folder icon, File Explorer, which is next to the Edge icon if you're using the stock Windows. Then we want to click on this PC and then the computer. And then we want to open system properties. This just allows us to see information about the computer and make changes to it, which we need to make a few changes. So we want to go into device manager. And then we can see the com and LPT so we know we've got USB serial on COM3 and we want to go to port settings now because the COM port 3 wasn't there when we opened this originally we need to close this again and then reopen it this is the point where a lot of installs go wrong for the Hornby Elite and the e-link we need to match the settings that hornby want with our computer so first of all we change this to com port 3 because we know that our controller is on com port 3 and then we want to change the bits per second to match the baud rate and the bits per second should be 115200 which we can see from the settings here. Paratry, paratry is none and our data bits is eight 
the stop bits is one and everything is now the same. And we can now hit the check. This is going to save the settings in both Hornby and the settings for the computer. And we can now close all these windows while we're waiting on the settings changing. And now, every so often, this status will blink. And that should tell us that all of our settings are correct. We can also go back into the settings and we can see that our controller A is now no longer red in the background. That also tells us that we set everything up correctly. So we can close this and then close Real Master. We need to close Real Master to back everything up and save all of our changes. Now the next time that we load Real Master, it's going to check for updates. It did it the first time, but it didn't install anything. The second time around, however, it is going to find updates. Every single time I have done this install and this process, it's always got updates the second time around. So there we go. We've got a free update available. So we've got 166.1 and we want to hit the, the check mark. And again, I'm not going to speed this up because it doesn't take all that long. With this, you do have to be patient and let Real Master do the process that it wants to do. Normally this jumps from the first little block there to the very last. And that's exactly what it's done again this time. Now the Real Master software will automatically close. Um, I have not touched anything here. It's just automatically done it and now it's ready to install. And like the first time that we installed, we just have to accept. And click next all the way through. Again, I'm not speeding this up. This is the actual speed that things are happening. And there we are. We've now got Real Master fully up to date and ready. So we'll just open it again. Just to make sure that the install had gone well. And there we go, that's Real Master now installed and ready to be programmed. In the next Real Master video I will show you how to set up a layout. I'll start by building a basic loop and then add some locos to it. And that's it. That's all you have to do. The hardest bit of this is making sure that the COM port is set right. If the COM port is not set, you will never get Real Master to be able to talk without any errors. If you have any comments or questions um, specifically about this, this video or any other video that I've done, please put it in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do.